How's it going guys? Uh, my name is Stone and today I am back with another video. And in this video I'm going to be discussing an album that features a kind of music that I haven't really dove into on this channel yet. Which is the slow, heavy, yet psychedelic style known as stoner metal. Now this is a genre that had piqued my interest last year and introduced me to a kind of metal music that I never thought would have existed. I always had this notion before discovering this genre, that metal music had to be loud, fast, and sometimes scary sounding in order to be recognized in that music community. But once I was recommended to check out bands like Sleep and Electric Wizard, it gave me a new perspective and a greater appreciation for that kind of music. I know that I'll be reviewing some albums from this genre over time, but I decided to begin with probably one of the most influential of that genre, which is Sleep's Holy Mountain. Uh, this album was released in 1992 and would help the band gain success and notoriety for their next project known as Jerusalem originally, but most notably known as Dope Smoker. When I first decided to listen to this album, I was anxious to see how a band that was able to pull off such an incredible hour-long song would go about writing shorter and more accessible tracks. But after giving this album one listen, I already knew that this album would be very influential to my taste, though maybe not as much as Dope Smoker was to me. I thought this would be the perfect album to introduce and review on my channel because I think this is a great start for anyone who wants to get into this genre and see if this is what they're interested in. Because I never knew I liked this kind of music until I tried it out and sure enough it was part, became part of my taste. Uh, like all my other videos, I'll be going into detail about each track, then wrapping it up, or wrapping my thoughts on the album up towards the end of the video. Sleep's Holy Mountain begins with probably their most memorable guitar riff, and one of their most popular songs, Dragonaut. This is a song that deserves all the attention that it gets in the stoner rock community, as its groovy melody, murky vocals, and crushing drum work by Justin Marler practically define this genre into a five minute time frame. Definitely one of their best songs in their discography, so I highly recommend you go and check this song out if you haven't heard it already. I feel like if yeah, if you had to listen to one song on this album, probably this one or another one that I will mention down on the in uh, later in the video. The next track, The Druid, only directs Holy Mountain to a much heavier sound with the vocals becoming much more demanding yet shorter in order to make space for the amazing bass and guitar work that fills about three-fourths of this song. It's another notable track by the band that I continue to love and come back to. And then uh, Evil Gypsy slash Solomon's theme then comes in and chugs along with its grungy bass riff and its slower yet just as powerful drumming pattern. It does pick up some speed towards the second half however and is led by an amazing guitar solo performed by the very talented Matt Pike before it can lead its way back to the guitar isolated interlude known as Some Grass. This song happens to have a special place in my heart even if it's no longer than a minute. I think it just captures a sense of blues that seamlessly fits itself perfectly to everything else on this album. Then we get to the closer on side A if you're listening to this on vinyl that is which is one of my favorite songs in this album, Aquarian. Now everything about this track is pretty awesome. I mean, the duo between the guitar and drums throughout this song, especially in the beginning, is just phenomenal. And the singing and lyrics on here are definitely some of the band's best. It seems to have a slow yet, it seems to be slow yet heart racing at the same time, which is what I like about this track so much and why I find it to be so unique. But then, it's followed by what I consider to be one of the best songs they ever wrote, Holy Mountain, the title track. The distortion and heaviness throughout this nine minute track is just so dark and intense from beginning to end. And it's those roaring vocals by Al, can't pronounce his last name, I think it's Al Cineros. Oops. Uh, Al follows that same atmosphere with the that the music is providing with his excellent vocals. 
The band then slows down and almost ponders with their instruments for a moment, just before they come crashing back in, into an even louder sound than they ever had before. Allah then sings one more amazing verse before they uh, bring everything to a halt. And it's an incredible track that... Um, and this is another track I definitely recommend. The title track is amazing. It's one I used to listen to like every day. I don't know. I never thought I would have loved it as much as I did, but that's the beauty about discovering new music. Uh, the singing and speed of the next track, Inside the Sun, is definitely some of their angriest sounding music, yet it still seems to find a way to resemble a doom metal song, more specifically in its middle section. I, I had trouble getting into the song. It took me some time, just because I think the lyrics are a little weak. But it still has a groove to it that gets stuck in my head often, especially when since I've re-listened to this album. Th we then get to the longest track on Holy Mountain, which is From Beyond. And this song features some of the best build-up from soft to menacing out of their entire catalog. And is a great track to help conclude this album. I also think this song kind of comes off as a part two to Holy Mountain. Not to say that it's a replica, but to say that it does contain a similar groove and a vocal melody that I still happen to enjoy just as much. And I, it's a really good song. Or hearing it more recently for this review made me realize how amazing that song actually is. Now, what I consider this... Oh, sorry, I forgot one more song. Uh, we conclude this album on the dominating instrumental Nine's Baptism, if I'm saying it correctly. This track is a very heavy sludge metal sound to it, and as its slow yet hazy bass riffs just carry the weight of this song's short runtime. Very underrated track by the brand, by the band, and it only makes sense that this would be the closer to Holy Mountain. It really just slows everything down. Probably one of the slowest songs on here, and another underrated song by them. Now, what I consider this album to be a masterpiece. I like to think so. Holy Mountain to me has a quality that most metal albums struggle to find, which is having a track listing that features songs that are not all too similar to each other. I think songs like Inside the Sun and Nine's Baptism have two completely different atmospheres to them, yet they go hand in hand when put together on this amazing record. I'm glad that I've been able to share my thoughts about this stoner metal classic, and I highly recommend you give it a listen. If you have listened to it, let me know in the comments what you think about it. If it's your favorite sleep album, or is it Dope Smoker, is it The Sciences, let me know. Well, um, <laughs> that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.